Meet the loose-jawed dragonfish, an animal that is adapted to living thousands of meters below the ocean's surface in the deep sea. In this environment, darkness is so pervasive that often the only light that animals can see is that generated through bioluminescence through living organisms. Blue bioluminescent light travels the farthest in water, and over millions of years of evolution, many animals have actually lost the ability to see the color red. But take a look at this loose-jawed dragonfish. Do you see the large red organ under its eye? This particular fish is capable of emitting a red light that acts as a private flashlight that only it can see. While other animals are busy being distracted by the brilliant blue flashes of light happening all around them in this deep sea habitat, the loose-jawed dragonfish can hunt sneakily undetected. It is an extraordinary example of an animal using light and color to thrive in an environment that often feels alien to us. We're often fascinated by glowing life forms in science fiction films like Star Wars and Avatar, but the reality is that animals right here on Earth are capable of glowing via biofluorescence and bioluminescence. Scientists recently discovered the many sharks, rays, and other marine fishes, particularly found in coral reef habitats, are capable of biofluorescence. Biofluorescence occurs when an organism can absorb light of one color, such as blue, and re-emit that light in other colors, such as vivid greens, oranges, and reds. Even Dory from Finding Nemo is found to be hiding this hidden visual phenomenon. Now we know that biofluorescence is widespread among cartilaginous and rayfin fishes, but the extent to which it's been documented in terrestrial vertebrates on land has comparatively remained a mystery. That seems odd, right? Speaking as a member of a terrestrial vertebrate species, shouldn't we know this by now? Well, often our understanding of the world is limited, at least initially, by our own perception. Our senses as humans have been shaped by our own evolutionary history. But the senses of other animals have been shaped by different environmental pressures. So they may see the world in a completely different way. So how do we break through our assumptions that may limit our understanding about the natural world? Well, today we're going to be shining a new light on amphibians, and we guarantee you'll leave here seeing them in a completely different way. I'm a herpetologist, someone who studies amphibians and reptiles, and I'm particularly interested in how amphibians interact with one another and how they interact with other animals in their environment. And I'm an ichthyologist, a scientist that studies fishes, I'm interested in deep sea fishes and their adaptations, including bioluminescence and biofluorescence. When Matt and I first met, I was setting up my new lab spaces at St. Cloud State University, and we got to chatting about our interests, including Matt's work with biofluorescence in fishes. We quickly realized that neither of us knew anything about biofluorescence in amphibians. There are more than 8,000 species of amphibians worldwide, from frogs to salamanders to the odd-looking legless Sicilians that live in the tropics. It was amazing to realize that we didn't know this about them already, but we knew we wanted to find out. To get started, we made a setup in the lab and the field to explore for the presence of biofluorescence among amphibians. In the field, this essentially meant we were running around with a fancy blue flashlight and some awesome yellow glasses. The flashlight acted as our light source, and the glasses acted as a filter so we could better visualize the fluorescent emissions coming back from these amphibians. While in nature, many animals have evolved over millions of years to have eye specializations to potentially see these fluorescent emissions, including maybe built-in filters, for us scientists, we have to wear shades. <laughs> what we found amazed us. So one of the first species that we looked at was this eastern tiger salamander. Under our blue lights and through our filter, um, the salamander's yellow markings shone a brilliant fluorescent green. And we were really taken aback by how bright this biofluorescence was. We wanted to understand how widespread this phenomenon was across amphibians and whether it varied from species to species. Getting a sense of this would let us know how early on in the evolution of amphibians this feature may have evolved and also its potential importance for their biology. Initially, we focused on salamanders. So salamander biodiversity is highest in North America. With every species of salamander we tested, we discovered new patterns and colors that scientists had previously not seen. 
Humans had literally never seen a salamander like this before. And we wondered if this kind of biofluorescence is present and variable in salamanders, is it present and variable in frogs? Or what about in those odd legless Sicilians in the tropics? It turns out that every species we tested was capable of biofluorescence. So now that we know that amphibians can glow, one of the big questions is why? Well, we know from fishes that they can either produce and emit light or absorb and re-emit light for a variety of different functions. If we look back at our loose jaw dragonfish that we started with, they actually use a combination of bioluminescence and biofluorescence to emit that red light that they use to hunt prey items undetected. In this example of a barbel dragonfish, they use glowing from their chin barbel to attract prey items, and they also use glowing from their ventral surface and their, along their belly to hide their silhouette as they make daily vertical migrations to and from the ocean's surface. Finally, in this example of a lanternfish, they use their ability to glow in their dark, deep-sea environment for communication, including for reproductive displays. Now, it's possible that the function for amphibians can also vary by species to species, or in some cases, there may be no function at all. We now know that many frogs are highly specialized to see the color green, including in the wavelengths that we observed our fluorescent emission patterns in. Also, many amphibians are highly active in environmental conditions that are conducive to biofluorescence, including at night under moonlight. Now, some plants and fungi biofluoresce as well, but the colors vary from red to green. If an amphibian's color pattern can match that of its background while it's fluorescing, then perhaps biofluorescence serves as a kind of camouflage to help them hide in these habitats. This is one hypothesis for why fishes living in coral reefs will biofluoresce. Another idea is that maybe amphibians use these bright colors to help find and choose a mate. We've started to learn that many of the colors and patterns that vary between males and females actually fluoresce really brightly. In fact, in some salamanders, specific parts of their reproductive anatomy shine a bright, brilliant green, almost like a beacon to help them find each other in the amphibian version of a nightclub or a rave. Some amphibians use color and pattern to warn potential predators that they're toxic. In our study, we found that many of these warning patterns were also highly fluorescent, and they shine with a bright green intensity. Interestingly enough, a number of predators of amphibians, such as birds, are well known to be able to visualize ultraviolet and fluorescent emissions. It's possible that these fluorescent displays associated with these color patterns may also be aiding in telling these predators that these organisms are toxic. Now, we don't fully understand yet how all of these amphibians biofluoresce. It could be that pigments in their skin or compounds in their mucus are responsible for the glow. Scientists have discovered that jellyfishes and some marine fishes produce a protein that's responsible for biofluorescence in those species. And it may be that amphibians produce a similar kind of protein, or perhaps they're biofluorescing in a completely different way. We also hope that this discovery will help us better find amphibians in their natural habitat. Many amphibians can be cryptically camouflaged or difficult to identify in their environment. Biodiversity surveys are critical for identifying threatened and endangered species. And unfortunately, one in three amphibian species is currently in decline, threatened, or endangered. We hope that now that we know that they glow, we could maybe better find, document, and save these animals in the wild. Collaborating on this work has let us see amphibians in a totally new light, and we're curious to learn more. We hope that we're leaving you with a similar sense of awe and intrigue about these familiar animals. Our work serves as a kind of roadmap for future studies interested in understanding the biology of amphibians. And the really exciting reality is that there's still so much more left to learn. Sometimes we take the biodiversity around us for granted and dream about distant wonders and galaxies far away. But the reality is one doesn't have to look any farther than their own backyard to discover an entire hidden world of glowing life. Just don't forget your special lights and glasses. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.